So if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know that I've tried Emacs a bit. You know, I, I've you know I've done a week here, I've done a week there. I think I did a month once. I've never really had any use for it. I, my my biggest complaint has always been it has too many features. I don't need all of the things that Emacs can do, and I still mostly feel that way. Like everyone keep, always tells me to try out org mode. I really have no interest in org mode simply because it just adds an extra layer to my workflow that I don't really need. But I'm actually trying Emacs again on a bet, and I've had a much better time this time simply because I've put more effort into actually making my own configuration files, and I've just kind of enjoyed learning some of the things that Emacs can do along the way of creating a NeoVim-like Emacs experience. So I've had a good time, and... I'm going to continue to use Emacs for a while simply because I haven't won the bet yet. But there is one feature that I enjoy more than I thought I would. There's one feature that is better than Vim for sure, and that's buffers. It's not even really close. Now, I know if you're a NeoVim fan or a, a Vim fan, Vim does buffers. It does buffers perfectly fine. There's not much you know, that you can complain about, but because of the way Emacs runs, specifically runs in the background because of it having its own daemon, you can close Emacs and still be able to move between buffers, but even more than that, you can copy paste and stuff between buffers. So you don't have to always be in the same window all the time. I could have two instances of Emacs open, copy from one and go to the other without having to have the system clipboard be the conduit between those two things. It's actually Emacs that's doing it. Now, it's because there's a shared buffer system between those instances thanks to the daemon that's running. So I want to show you some of this stuff tonight while I'm actually recording this so you can actually see what I'm talking about. So I'm here in just a random HTML file and let's say that I wanted to go to my apps.nix configuration file, which is part of my Nix OS config. So if I if I hit space B, now these key bindings won't be the same in vanilla Emacs. I've done a whole bunch of configuration for my own. But if I wanted to go to my apps.nix, I just type in apps.nix and it would take me there. Now, so I could actually close Emacs like so and then reopen it and I could still go back to apps.nix because it's actually still there in my buffers, because it didn't actually close. It was still in the buffers because Emacs runs in the background. So just being able to do that much is pretty damn cool. But if I wanted to copy these few lines here, say I could yank those and then go to another buffer. So just random buffer here, say, say my services.nix. I could go down here and just like paste these because I'm in, I'm in the same thing. I just paste those in. Now, Vim can do that too if you move from buffers within the same thing. But let's just say, Let's un undo those before I forget. And let's open up another thing of Emacs. Let's copy something new here. I'll, I'll yank these things. Open up another thing of Emacs here. And then just open up a new or a, a different file. So I'll just go to, I'll just go to say uh, my Flatpaks one. It doesn't really matter. So I just go down here to the bottom, hit P, and you can see it copied between those two windows. That's not something that's actually as easy to do in Vim unless you have the system clipboard enabled. And by default, that's not the case. Now, you can obviously get Vim to function like this, but Emacs does it out of the box. And that is just so cool. So I, I can basically treat every instance of Emacs that I have as the same Emacs. So I can copy and paste. I can move things back and forth between them. I can open apps in one, or I can open files in one and the other, and it doesn't really matter where I am. And they're the same thing. It's all the same buffer system. That is just a phenomenally helpful thing when you're constantly moving back and forth between stuff. And like I said, you can recreate this in Vim for sure, but out of the box, it's just not there. And I think for me personally, this has been the biggest revelation for, for anything when I'm using Emacs, being able to treat buffers 
as a constant has really changed the way that I do a lot of things. And it just makes it so much easier to use. Now, there are many things I still don't like about Emacs. I had to put a ton of effort into making this thing function like uh, Vim, you know, mainly because I, I was, as part of the bet, I couldn't use Doom Emacs. So I had to use vanilla. So I had to basically build evil mode and everything up from the ground up in order for this to actually work. So... You know, that was an experience. But now that I'm here, it's just basically Vim, but with some really cool features. So like variable text sizes, because it's a GUI application, it can do those. But the buffer system is just so, so damn good. Now, I'm sure that there's more stuff here that I need to discover as I go along that I will probably like. And there are probably more things here that I find that I don't like. I... I really don't care for the autosave system. Like the, the autosave system that... Emacs has leaves artifacts all over the place unless you disable it and I've disabled it and that's fine but every once in a while you're still going to see a stupid artifact that's just in a in a file somewhere that Emacs left behind ages ago and that bugs me because I keep my file system fairly clean I don't want some random autosave file just sitting there forever and ever I want it to be gone now like I said you can disable that and I have but before I did I accumulated a ton of these little weird files that either have a, like a a, a a tilde I think that's what you call it at the end uh, or a hashtag at the beginning and the end. So I've seen both ways. And still, you know, I keep coming across these things from back when I had that enabled. And it was it's, it's annoying. So, but still, I, I will freely admit that I'm having a good time with Emacs. The buffer system, again, is the best feature for me. So, just a quick video for you guys tonight. I, I'm, I just wanted to talk about Emacs for just a little bit. Now, see, the thing is, is... Probably six to eight months ago, I made a video saying that I was going to do a long-term review of Emacs, and then I backed out on that just anonymously, just kind of let it ride. I didn't mention it again except for on a Patreon podcast. I think what I'll do, seeing as how I'm doing this anyways, is I'll go ahead and do that long-term review. Now, I'm going to do it my own way. There's going to be a few things I'm never going to cover, probably like org mode. Maybe I'll find some reason to use org mode for something else other than my main workflow, just so I can say that I did it, you know... I don't want to be accused of not, you know, doing this full, full fledged, but you know, I'm just going to do it my own way and we'll see how well that goes. I'll, I'll make a, a few Emacs videos over the course of the next few months, at, at least until I win the bet. So there you go. That's it for this one. If you have any thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you. The channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly, truly do appreciate it. If you want to support me and get some merch, you can actually go to my store, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find awesome hats, which I'm actually not wearing the hat tonight. It, it, it feels a little weird to do a video about the hat on, but I don't have the hat. Uh, well, actually, you know, I do have the hat. It's right here. There's the hat. You can get a hat like that. You can get t-shirts and hoodies and all sorts of stuff. All the proceeds for that go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for your support. If you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on the video and all that kind of stuff. I'll see you next time.